Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. This is Austrian Audio's very first USB microphone, the Mi Creator. This thing costs about $200, but there are some other kits to get some accessories as well. I will throw some links in the description down below. Full disclosure, this is on loan from Austrian Audio, but all of my recording settings will be listed in the description as well as the doobly-doo. And now let us talk about what comes in the box. What a surprise you are going to get the microphone. You get a 3 8 to 5 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a dust cover, a different colored cover for the front and the rear of the microphone, a 4 foot or 1.2 meter USB-C to USB-C cable, a 2 meter 3.5 mil TRRS to quarter inch cable for instruments, a tiny bit of documentation, and a sticker. Then as far as the build quality, the microphone feels pretty good. It has an entirely metal body, although the covers are made out of plastic. You get a metal enclosure for the capsule, which the capsule is suspended from, a metal grill surrounding the capsule, which doesn't have any give to it, and this entire enclosure surrounding the capsule tilts about 15 to 25 degrees to help you get a better position of the microphone on your sound source. On the front of the microphone, you have a gain selector switch to go from high gain, low gain, or mute. You have a light to indicate your headphone volume, as well as the mix between computer playback and zero latency monitoring. An encoder knob, which is also a button, and this allows you to adjust the headphone volume, as well as that mix between computer and zero latency. On the rear of the microphone, you have another gain switch to go between high or low gain, and this controls a second input on the rear of the microphone. That is a 3.5 millimeter in and out. This can be used for instruments, a second Austrian audio satellite microphone, a lavalier microphone, a headset, or something like that. You get a three and a half millimeter output for your headphones, which does offer zero latency monitoring and computer playback. You have a USB-C port to connect this to your computer, and if you care or not, this microphone is made in China. Then up on the screen, I will have a couple of the specs that I was able to find. They will also be listed in the description in case you want to pause and take a closer look at any of them. Now I am spinning around the Mi Creator to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, this is the rear of the microphone. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, there we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now onto the dreaded test where I demonstrate how well this microphone does at rejecting plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. How did I struggle to say pizza? What's wrong with me? Now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect and here's how it sounds. Now six inches away from the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here's how it sounds. Now I'm about one foot away from the me creator. Now about two feet away from the microphone and about four feet away from the Austrian audio me creator. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, now I'm typing on the sad W and spacebar keys. Now here is how the microphone sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a relatively well-treated room. And now here is how the microphone sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a completely untreated room. Next, I want to see how effective the microphone is at rejecting shocks, so I'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that noise it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. Now, because I'm incredibly annoying and I want to be thorough, I am going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies.
Now I have a satellite connected to the rear of the Mi Creator. The gain for both capsules is set to high, and I have this in a completely imperfect and terrible 90 degree XY setup. There's probably even going to be some phase issues, but I wanted to include a demonstration of how you could use these two microphones. As I rotate around, you can hear me more out of one speaker. Going around the other way, you hear me more out of the other. So you could use this satellite to get some stereo miking techniques under your belt. Or you could use the Me Creator and the satellite for some kind of interview show or podcast where you have the Me Creator in front of you and the satellite is set up for the guest on your show. I guess I could, but that would involve interacting with people and that's terrifying to me. Now, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that we're reviewing and a couple of other microphones that are available so we can hear how it stacks up against the competition and so that you don't just hear this microphone within a vacuum. Starting on the Austrian Audio Me Creator, 6 inches off, gain on high, input level 26.7%, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, and here's how it sounds. First up, I am on the original Blue Yeti, 6 inches away, cardioid polar pattern, gain on mic set at 12 o'clock, input level 36%, 16-bit, 48 kilohertz. This microphone goes for about $110 now, but it's frequently on sale around $80. And here is how this sounds compared to the Mi Creator. Let's hear some more. Back again on the Mi Creator for a palate cleanser. Here is how it sounds. Let's hear another microphone. Now I am on the Audio Technica AT2020 USB X. I am six inches off. My input level is set at about 17%, recording 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. This microphone costs about $130, and here is how it sounds compared to the Austrian Audio. Let's jump back to the AA and do a few more. All right, we're going to keep blowing through these. Here is the Mi Creator again. Nothing has changed. Check the lower third. Let's jump to the third microphone. Now I am on the Sennheiser Profile USB, six inches off. The gain on the microphone is set at about 1230. Input level at 100%. 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. This microphone costs also around $130. And here is how this sounds compared to the Mi Creator. Let's go ahead and do a bunch more comparisons. Back again on the Mi Creator for another palate cleanser. This shouldn't be any surprise. Let's hear some more microphones. Now I am on the Samson G-Track Pro, which is the only other microphone in this lineup that has a similar feature where it is a microphone, but also accepts a secondary input. I am six inches off. My gain on mic is set at 12 o'clock, recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz. I am unable to change my input settings. This microphone goes for about $140. When I say input settings, I mean I can't change my input level on my computer. And here is how this sounds compared to the Austrian audio. I hope that wasn't confusing. Let's do some more comparisons. This is the midpoint palette cleanser on the Mi Creator. Six inches off, gain high, input 26.7%. Let's hear the next mic. Next, I am on the Logitech Blue Yeti X. I am six inches off. I am on the cardioid polar pattern. The microphone's gain is set at about 1030 or 11. My input level is set at 62%, recording 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. This microphone also goes for about $140. All of the blue voice processing is shut off. And here is how this sounds compared to the mic we're reviewing. Let's do a couple more. Four more, I think. All right, we are over the hump, and this is your palate cleanser on the Mi Creator. Literally nothing has changed. <laughs> so let's hear the next microphone. Now I am on the Rode NT-USB+. Plus. I am six inches off with my input level on the computer set to 69%, recording 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. This microphone costs about $170.
and hear us how it compares against the Austrian audio. Let's jump back and do three more comparisons. Here is how the me creator sounds. Is this surprising to you in the slightest? But just to make it easy on you, this is a palate cleanser. Let's hear some more mics. Now I am on the Rode NT1 5th Gen. I am six inches off. I am running USB directly into my computer. Input level set at 25%. 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. That's right, I'm not doing 32-bit float. This microphone costs about $250-ish dollars, USB and XLR. And here is how this sounds compared to the Austrian audio. I believe this is the super penultimate palate cleanser on the Mi Creator. I'm never going to get used to saying that, and I still don't think that's right. But there you go. Let's hear the second-to-last microphone. Now I am on the Austrian Audio OC818. I am on the cardioid polar pattern with no pad and no filters engaged. I am running this into the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen with my gain set at about 3 o'clock. I am recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz. This microphone costs about $1,250, so a lot more than the Mi Creator. But I want to hear how this sounds compared to Austrian Audio's more entry-level offerings. And there you go. This is how it sounds compared to the Me Creator. Let's go back and do one final comparison. And we have one final microphone to go, so this is your final palate cleanser. You know what it's going to be. Let's jump to it right now. And finally, we are on the Neumann, hello, Neumann, U87AI. I am on the cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filter, six inches off, gain set at around 1130, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. This microphone costs about $3,700, which makes it $3,500 more expensive than the Mi Creator. That means this is a totally fair comparison. Don't at me, bro. But this is how the U87 sounds compared to the Mi Creator. And those are all the comparisons that I have for you. That is it. Let us jump to the music test now. Now I'm going to use the provided instrument cable and try out an electric guitar, electric bass, and acoustic guitar. I will provide the DI samples, then an amp simulator version, and then I will play a full mix using those instruments. Now let's use the actual microphone capsule and I will record some electric guitar, acoustic guitar, and singing and give you that song.
your hat and ask why it does its job. You'll never know, but it's always sitting there. Yeah, when's the last time you looked over at your hat and said, Gee, thanks for being such a darn good hat. Why do you come to work every day? It's a thankless job. I bet never. How rude. It it is official. I've run out of things to sing about. I just saw a hat and said, okay, I'll sing about that. Let's go to the conclusion. As far as USB microphones go, I think this is a really nice first offering from Austrian Audio. And first up as far as pros, the main one that stands out to me is the second input on the rear of the microphone. That allows you to capture a second microphone, a lavalier microphone, an instrument input, and that is just insanely useful if you're a musician. On that note, that input handled electric guitar, electric bass, and an acoustic DI without clipping, which is awesome to see. I also really appreciate the tiltable capsule because that makes getting just the right microphone position a lot easier. The mic did a great job at shock rejection as well. You get 24 bit up to 48 kilohertz. And as I always say, I know people will love the fact that they switched over to USB C or they are using USB C for this microphone. And then as far as cons, I found that this microphone didn't do the greatest job at background noise rejection. The plosive rejection on this thing also left a bit to be desired. And I personally wish they had a mute button which was meant to be more actively used. As it stands, this is only really meant to mute the microphone capsule while you use the secondary input on the rear. It's not meant to actively mute and unmute when you're in a voice call. So I wish they included some way to mute the microphone more actively as opposed to this switch. And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of the me creator? As far as the sound of this thing, I wouldn't say that it's the same, but I would say it falls within the same ballpark as its big brothers, the OC18 and 818. Thank you for notifying me it's the top of the hour. You are getting a nice controlled low end that isn't weak, but it's also not overpowering or muddy. The mids aren't recessed either, so you're getting a slightly more mid-focused sound, but it doesn't sound overly pushed and it doesn't sound congested. And then in the treble frequencies, it's not over boosted, which is nice to hear, and then it remains relatively smooth and unharsh, which I think is kinda rare for USB condenser mics. On the electric guitar, I quite liked it because it is slightly more mid-focused, and then in the upper frequencies, it's not overly brittle or harsh. On the acoustic guitar, I didn't love it, but it is certainly workable. The thing that I wasn't a huge fan of is it's just not as lively or exciting as I prefer in the treble and air frequencies. For singing vocals, I think this works great because the mids come across a bit more punchy and the top end has plenty of detail without sounding too harsh. And for spoken word, I think this works really well because the low end is nice and controlled. The mids are nice and present without being scooped at all and without being congested. And the top end on this thing, I find very easy to listen to. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Austrian Audio Me Creator? For some people. If you're looking for a mic strictly for conference calling, I would recommend looking elsewhere, mainly because this microphone lacks a really easy to use mute button. That is something that is available on something like the AT2020 USB, the Sennheiser Profile, or any other number of USB microphones. This is meant more to mute the microphone while you use the input on the rear and not for active muting and unmuting. Or if you're somebody who has zero need for that secondary audio input on the rear of the microphone, I would say save a few bucks and go for one of the alternatives. Unless you absolutely love the way this sounds, just know that if you get this and you don't have a use for that input, that you are paying a premium for a feature that you don't need. However, if you are a musician, I think that's where this thing really shines because not only do you get a really nice sounding USB microphone, but you also get that secondary input which accepts DI instruments. So you can sing into this thing and capture electric guitar, electric bass, or acoustic guitar DI, and that is awesome. 
The only other microphone that I'm aware of that has that same or similar functionality is the Samson G-Track Pro. It is a USB condenser microphone. It is a big chungus. And on the rear, you get a quarter inch instrument input and it allows you to multi-track those by switching from mono to two track. So you need to determine which of these microphone fits your needs. And more importantly, which of these microphones you like the sound of better because they offer very similar functionality. The last group of people that I would recommend this for is if you want that standard USB microphone form factor and ease of use, but you want to be able to expand the microphone to fit your use case, maybe for some shots you just want the single USB microphone, maybe for a second shot you want two microphones so you can interview somebody, maybe you do ASMR so you want stereo miking, you want capsules in different areas, or maybe in one shot you want the standard USB mic, but then in another, you want a microphone out of frame, so you choose to use a lavalier microphone. So you mute the front capsule and use the secondary lav input on the rear. Full disclosure, I have not tried that accessory, so I cannot vouch for it. I am just trusting that it works as promised. So if that is you, you want the standard USB mic form factor and functionality, but you want the ability to expand upon it to fit your different use cases and shots, I think that's where this really shines along with for musicians. All right, that's all that I've got for you. If you found that fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hated it, big old thumbs down. And thank you so much for coming by, watching, listening. You are incredible, and I love you from the bottom of my heart. I will talk to you next week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Whoa. Whoa.